Hello everyone, welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask you today to help us through our week, Father God. We thank you for helping us through this week and help us through another week, Father God. Father God, we ask you to give us understanding of this devotion. Help us to apply it to our lives, Father God. Help us to hear you when you speak. Father God, forgive us of any sins we've done knowing and unknowingly. Father God, bless the ones that are hearing it. Bless the ones that are reading it. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is our last day, our memory verse, which is James 5, 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praises. Verse of the day is Mark 4, 38. Jesus is in the stern storm, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Subject, trouble in the water. Christian truth, I'm going to say it and pause behind each one. Let you, to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I have victory. I'm strong. I'm righteous. I'm not troubled. Read Tom, 8 minutes, 35 seconds. Sometimes we can have trouble in our life and we immediately go to the worst thoughts and deal with things our way. But we don't wait on God. For some people in the Bible, the first sign of distress, they, they went to immediately to Jesus. Like the disciples in the boat. The storm got so bad, they woke him up and they, they asked, Don't you care if we drown? That was the first words they woke him up to. Mark 4 and 38. Jesus was in the storm. Sleeping on a cushion, the disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He then got up, calmed the storm, and his question to them in their troubled water, verse 40, he said to the disciples, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? This is the question he's asking us now. Do you still have no no mat, no faith, no matter what it looks like? Do you still have faith in me? Have the problem got that bad that you lose your faith? Or do you doubt who I am? I, a lot of us doubt ourselves in the troubled water because we know how we are. We know we are full of anxiety. We know the more we are having an issue, the more worried we get. But we must allow God to take over. We often try to do everything ourselves. Verse 41. They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obeyed him. We forgot who God is in our lives. We forget who he is. He's, he's the creator of everything. He's the author of our story. He's the captain of our ship. We have to remember he can solve everything to the biggest, to the smallest problem. But we have to remember this. We can't allow what the enemy has placed in our lives and are the problem he we have to prevent us from seeing who he is to us. A lot of us are allowing situations to ruin our relationship with God because we begin to believe maybe he's not who he say he is. But God is everything and more to us. Psalms 95 and 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. When we praise God with our voice, we clap our hands. We, we just take time to praise him for who he is, which can break many chains and hold us back and hold back, hold us back in our lives that is holding us back in our lives. But many people don't want to do this. Still, I've had some places, I've had some places where I have had some troubled water. When I began to praise him, a release of a lot of baggages that I had because I allowed my praise to help me. I allowed my praise to worship him. I allowed my praise to be my medicine to my brokenness. God is ready to release us, but we must release some praise while we are in the troubled water. This week we talked about relying on God and that's what we must do while we are in the troubled water. We must rely on him to be what we need in the remedy to our problems. We can try everything we can to solve our, pro our issues, but God has the remedy to, to our troubled water, to our broken heart, to our broken marriage, to our rebellious children, to our financial status. But we have to rely on him to speak to us. Psalms 37 and 7. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about the wicked schemes. What God wants from us sometimes is so simple. It's, it's for us to crave to be with him. It's to crave to spend time with him. So some of us don't soak in his presence because we don't want to make the time to do it. But when we are in trouble water, that is the most important thing we can do, which is read our word, pray, and meditate. God knows precisely where we, where he wants us and how he wants us to be. But a lot of times we don't want to trust if, if we put in the time that he'll be there for us. And we assume it's quicker if we just do it our own way and it's not. The word tells us Matthew 4 and 4. Jesus answered, is it written men shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God? We think we can survive in this world without reading our word. We can't. We would spiritually die without connecting with the true vine. 
when we don't connect with him, we slowly start to stumble in our lives, which brings us to another topic we discuss. When we stumble, it has consequences. And sometimes we don't see what we do as being what we shouldn't do because the enemy has us so blinded by it all. 1 Corinthians 6 and 12. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is a beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be a master by anything. We can't do everything we see other people do because they might not be living the life we are trying to live. Sometimes in this life, we feel like we have no victory in anything. We feel that no matter how much we give, it isn't enough. No matter how much we do, it still isn't enough. And nothing adds up to anything. But as we give to God, we will get more. It's not, it might not be money. It, it could be spiritual. I don't know. It just depends on what God has planned for your life. But whatever he has planned, just know it's more than you could ever get from this world. And a lot of us look for happiness and a lot of things, but we should allow God to fill us with joy and victory. First John 5, 4 through 5. In fact, this is the love God for God to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcome the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith. Who is that overcome the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Today we look, we learned that it's not about you or I finding the solution when we have trouble when we have trouble in the water. It's about us going to the one that conquered it all for us, which is Jesus. It's about going to the one that can solve everything and that can that has the remedy, which is Christ. A lot of us run around and we try to find answers in. in other things but we should find the answer in God we also learned this week about victory in God victory it's not about having victory over this life it's about having victory and overcoming the things in this world and listening to the commands of God we only have this when we believe in Christ excuse me I have had my fair share of days and probably have more of days where I'm not going to be happy but knowing that happiness doesn't make a person keeps me going. Still having it joy in God and know that even in the water is trouble. I must rely on God for everything. And a lot of us don't rely on God. We rely on everything else to give it to us. Once we stop relying on this world and stop relying on others, then we will understand so much more life will go so much easier when we depend on God. And not ourselves, not our bank accounts, not our spouses, but just on God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this week. We ask that you be with us and save us from our issues. Lord, we're so grateful for everything. Help us to be more like you. Give us more courage to believe in you and not our situation. We love you so much and we are grateful for what you're doing in our lives and what you give us. Lord, please keep us strong in you. We praise you right now for everything in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Reference, Psalms 86, 6 through 7. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. In the day my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Psalms 86 and 6 through 7. Proverbs 12 and 3. An evil man is trapped by his sinful talk, but a righteous man escapes trouble. Proverbs 12 and 3. Romans 8 and 37. In these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8 and 37. Further reading, Proverbs 21, Leviticus 21, Ezekiel 45. Acts 11. This end trouble in the water. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember to like, subscribe, and follow on any platform. Remember, share with any family member or friend. Please share on social media if you can. And if you can, if you have a few minutes, please go to YouTube and like and subscribe. Thank you. Be blessed.